from all around you long. I'm here to tell you how football is strong. We're the best. Welcome back to the program. Well, joining me on the couch now, I have Deb Arclay from the Bannockburn Club for a quick interview. Deb, thanks for coming into the show. No, thank you for having us. Great to have you here. Now, we haven't covered a lot about Bannockburn yet, but certainly it gives us a bit of insight and an opportunity to do that today. Mm -hmm. Now, we were just talking before the show, and you have an extensive, extensive resume for Bannockburn. You are so involved with the club. Can you tell us a bit about that? Uh, yeah, just at the moment, I'm on the committee, um, and I coach three sides, so yeah, but at the, the moment, our junior, uh, our committee is um, made up of uh, like junior parents and senior players and coaches, so it's, it's really exciting at the moment, so yeah. It certainly is. Mm -hmm. Now, we were just talking as well about the committee being quite new this year in terms of having the junior players. How has that worked? Has there been a new structure that's been put in place? What have you done to get those people into those roles? Uh, yeah, we've actually um, asked a few of the junior parents to be involved and um, some players and coaches and that. And so we've, um, by doing that, we've inter implemented a few strategies from the committee with um, juniors trialling for senior positions and also having only nine players um, on the team each game day, which has helped with not having a lot of people sitting on the bench. So that's been good for the, um, this year. Yeah, definitely. And also good for those junior players to get involved with the club. Mm. What sort of positions and what responsibilities have they taken on? Uh, the junior players? Yeah, yeah the juniors. Um, we've got three juniors that are playing in seniors. Um, Abby Watt plays, she started off in B grade, is now um, up into the A grade. And Erin um, Dillon and Tegan Smith, they play 17s and they're playing B grade as well. And they're both playing in... Um, in dominant positions, they play goal attack and goal defence. So, and Abby plays wing attack or wing defence in A grade. So, it's really exciting. Fantastic, it mm. is. It's really great to see mm. those um, younger players standing up into mm. those senior sides. Now, you've certainly got to be busy every Saturday. How do you manage your time with coaching? What, what levels is it? The under 13s? Um, 15, 17s, 15 and B. 15, 17s and B. How yeah. do you do that? Uh, do no, I actually busy? have uh, lots of help. Uh, Jeanette Watts a great help with, with to me, and um, and my captains for each side. They take the warm up and. And so by doing that, I actually just sort of get there on to the game and, and away we go. So Excellent. that's good. So you've got a bit of help. That's great. Oh, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> now, we were just um, mentioning before also that you've got some players come back into the A-grade side. Mm -hmm. Do you want to just mention who they are and, uh, and yeah. what sort of impact they've had at the club? Yep. We've had um, Kylie Ainley. She actually coached last year and has come back from having a baby. So she's now um, in our um, goaling as also and wing attack. Hopefully she loves to play that more than goaling, but she mm -hmm. does a great job in the goals. Um, and Kristen Hinchliffe has come back from overseas um, and she's our pocket rocket that runs all over the court and if you saw the game on Saturday she actually threw herself literally in the air to get a ball so wow. she's amazing and we're also um, Kelly Gregan she's um, one of the footballers um, partners so she's there and her actually um, and one of the um, her actually future perhaps sister-in-law um, Narelle is our A-grade coach and she's young and enthusiastic so mm. so it's it's good. Fantastic. Yes. Now, uh, you were saying that player threw herself with the ball and just runs all day. Mm. Sorry, I can't remember her name. Kristen Hinchley. Kristen, yep. right. Mm. What are you doing about your fitness? Because you were saying to me earlier that you're probably not as fit as you'd like, but the mm. girls are working on that. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they've um, uh, our training. Uh, we did have a pre-season, but there wasn't a whole lot that got to up. But now they're a bit excited about it and realise that they have to sort of put in more at training. So, Narelle has the A grade, sort of run ragged on a Thursday night, which the girls want that. So, yeah, so they're improving their fitness that way as okay. well as other days, so. Great. Mm. Now, we discussed earlier in the show, you lost by one goal last mm. weekend. That must have been disappointing for It you. was, yes. But still a good result to have such a tight match. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was an exciting match. Like, I was timekeeping, so I was getting the nerves, you know, as well as the girls on the court. And they probably did, we were up by two goals in the last three minutes. And we probably did sort of force it into the ring a bit too much, but... Yeah, the girls realise that and, and they're working hard on the training track to fix that up for next time, so, yes. Excellent. Sounds good. Now, you've also got a junior development program, mm -hmm. I believe. Can yes. you tell us a bit about that? We have, yeah. Um, we've got um, some great coaches in the juniors. Um, Jess Wood and Elise Filer are doing the 13s and from last year we had Jay Whitcomb, which coached the 13s. So, like, the 13s and the 15s made the finals last year and um, the 13s are undefeated at the moment uh, and the 15s and the 17s are, are sitting about fifth position so so we're very excited about that. So you're that. doing well in your coaching role then. Yeah exactly so enjoying Excellent. that so and we've got um, like two of the players playing in the Parkville side of a Tuesday night for the Raiders and we've got eight girls from 13s to 15 sorry from 11s to 15s that are playing in the interleague side so so we're very excited about our juniors. And yeah, you would be. That's mm. fantastic. Yeah, so just watch out in a couple of years. That's what we're we aiming for. We certainly will. We mm. certainly will. Deb, is there anything else that you want to tell us about Bannockburn that we wouldn't already know? Uh, 
Anything exciting happening at the club? Oh yes, we've actually got Ladies Day coming you up do. in a couple of weeks' time. So we've implemented that last year, was our first one. Mm -hmm. And we've got it against the Corio, so you know, it's quite good. So the social side is very exciting. So Good. Yeah. And it's important for the players mm. to have that as well, Yes, it is, it? yeah. So yeah. they'll enjoy it. So. Great. Yeah. Deb, thank you so much for joining me on no the worries. couch this morning. It's fantastic to have you in. No and good luck for your match today. No worries, thanks a lot. Thank you. Great to hear from Deb there and good to hear a bit about Bannockburn and what's going on at the club. Now, as always, time to take a look at the ladders. So we're going to start with the A-grade ladder. Bertie, would you mind taking us through those, please? Certainly. Uh, we have Thompson on top, uh, still on top. Uh, they've been there for a few weeks now on 24 points. They're actually a, a game and a half clear of the, the, the rest of the field. Uh, Belpost Hill is second on uh, 18 points. Corio third uh, on 18 points as well after their two draws on the weekend. Uh, Winchelsea have climbed into fourth position uh, with Belmont fifth. And uh, just outside this, uh, the five uh, in sixth position is Belmont Lions. Uh, they're on 16 points as well. So it's really. Where was Werribee, sorry? W Werribee are uh, fifth. Fifth. Yeah, now fifth. that's got to be rather expected, or unexpected, I would think. Very unusual, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Where we haven't been that, uh, you know, that low for quite a few, for quite a while. Well not, well, not since I've been in the GDFL. Mm. Um, they've always been first or second. So, yes, could yeah. be the, the changing of the guard. And Corio doing well in third position as well. Look, Corio for sure. Corio haven't been up there for the last couple of years, um, but uh, they've got their uh, their things together down at uh, Corio Land there, and uh, yeah, they're third at the moment. So interesting. Amy, you're yeah, looking yeah, very I see that snarl <laughs> come out of the corner of his eye there. But it is interesting to see that today's matches, there's actually three matches within those top five teams, so mm. there should be some great games Sounds out of today's like game. Oh, today's matches. Yeah. Now, you've got the goal scorers, Amy. We haven't done this yet this season, but we're going to take a look at the top ten goal scorers for A grade. Yeah, we thought we'd take a look, seeing as so we're a third of the way through the season now. So leading on the goal scorers is from Belpost Hill, Bertie, just... Keep yourself in the chair over there, but okay. Camille Powell and is actually leading with Belinda Todd. They're actually equal on 181 okay. goals, which is awesome. Fantastic. It's an average of 30 goals per game. You'd have to be happy with your goal shooter pulling out 30 goals look, per game. Look, really, really happy with Camille and, and her, her goal shooting. She's um, uh, only just come out of under 17s this year, uh, so she's um, yeah just still not even 18 yet, um, and she's you know leading the A grade scoring. So I'm very happy with the way she's shooting at the moment. And Belinda Todd's always been definitely a driving force for Winchelsea down in, in goal shooter there as well. So that's not a surprise to me to see her dominance, no, especially this not. early in the season. Um, we've also then got Michaela Ward and Julie Cotter in third and fourth position. Um, Jess DeGrandy in Belmont. Kimberly Martin's up there as well, um, obviously from Belpost Hill. Then followed by M Michelle Razukas from Cryo, Kirsty Bradley from East Geelong, Steph Cations from Inverley and Michelle Bradley from Thompson. So... I think nearly every club's covered there as well, which is great to see. That is great, and some very familiar names. They're doing certainly quite well at the beginning of the season. Well, we have to throw to a break very quickly. We're going to be back right after this. We'll have an interview straight after the break, and then we'll look at next uh, today's matches. Football 